Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG channel. My name is Reed, and today we're going to be going over a really interesting phenomenon. I really enjoy the physiology. This is really going to help us kind of dial in and understand our cardiac electrophysiology. It's this phenomenon called Ashman phenomenon. It's obviously named after um, the guy who figured it out, Ashman. But really this is a functional aberrancy. Sometimes we would call it a rate related aberrancy, and it occurs when um, a change in the rate uh, creates a change in um, the way this beat, this Ashman phenomenon beat is conducted, and so um, we call it a rate related or functional aberrancy, and so let's talk a little bit about the physiology of these beats, and then we've got a couple of strips here that are going to be really fun to go over, and so we'll come to our um, diagram here. And so let's just talk about a little bit of what is going on in these rate related beats. And so um, we know that normal conduction comes from the sinus node down to the AV node, which then conducts it down the His bundle, right and left bundle branches through our Purkinje system, which creates a nice narrow complex QRS, right? That's our normal conduction from start to finish. And so I want you to remember this concept that uh, in the ventricles especially, so in the conduction system that is below the AV node, repolarization, which is the action of essentially the cells recovering back to a point where they are ready to fire off again, repolarization speed correlates with rate, right? And so what does that mean? So that means that our, you know, for example, in the ventricles, our QT interval, which is repolarization, right? That's our QT interval. It correlates with the rate, right? So if a slower rhythm, here's my P, QRS, T wave, P, QRS, T wave, right? It's a normal QT, but it's a slower rhythm. If we speed up repolarization, it correlates with the rate, it actually occurs faster. So if we have a P, QRS, T, P, QRS, T, P, QRS, T. Notice that my QT interval which represents my QT interval, which represents repolarization, is shorter when the speed is faster compared to this one, right? This is our slower, right? Notice how the change is in the QT interval, right? So what that means is faster rate, we have a shorter refractory period. And on the other hand, a slower rate means that we have a longer refractory period, right? And that's represented by when this rate slows down, look how long that QT interval is, right? And that's normal cardiac physiology. And so now that brings us to this next idea that, you know, this is occurring all within the ventricles. And so what's interesting is that repolarization is a little bit different between the right and left bundle branches, okay? So just bear with me, this is gonna make sense here in a little bit. So my right bundle branch, my wave of depolarization, repolarization, my cardiac membrane potential looks something like this, right? Where we have, here's my depolarization, here's my repolarization. Right, And then I'm going to draw the same one for my left bundle branch right here. It's going to look something like this. It's going to look very similar in shape. But notice that the left bundle branch, here's my depolarization again and repolarization. Notice the duration of these two. Notice how my right bundle branch, the duration is longer than the duration of the action potential of my left bundle branch block or my left bundle branch, excuse me. So my left bundle, it has a 
we'll call it a shorter refractory period refractory refractory period relative to the right bundle branch okay right so notice the the you know the refractory period is this whole time right here that's our refractory period which will outline in red that's the refractory period that's when these bundles have depolarized and they need to repolarize in order to recover and, and bring another signal or to conduct another signal and so if I overlaid the left bundle if I bring the left bundle over onto my right bundle and I drew it saying green my left bundle would look something like this if we overlaid them in time my left bundle would end earlier compared to my right bundle right so these are my green is my left bundle and the black is the right bundle we'll draw that right here black is my right bundle and so this is where something really interesting happens normally and this is time right we know our x-axis is time normally the next beat that comes down right so we have a beat that comes in and it signals these bundle branches to send the signal down right and so they send a signal down and then they recover and then the next beat occurs right over here again right and we get the depolarization again right in time but what happens if during this moment in time right here what if during that moment in time exactly there I get a premature atrial contraction just in the time where notice at this point my left bundle branch has already recovered it's already repolarized but my right bundle branch hasn't my right bundle branch is still not yet repolarized it's not yet recovered so what if I get a premature atrial contraction that occurs right there well then what would occur is we have a signal that's coming down we'll erase this we have a signal that comes from the SA node fires down and so get a normal repolarization depolarization but now we have a premature contraction that occurs through the atria captured by the AB node at the exact time as it's sending this down we're at this point in time so when this signal tries to go down the right bundle branch the right bundle branch is still not yet recovered it's not repolarized so the right bundle branch is going to be blocked it's going to be blocked but the left bundle is already recovered and so it's going to signal down the left bundle like normal we'll have left ventricular depolarization and then we're going to have right ventricular depolarization after that from cell to cell gap junction this might sound familiar this is a right bundle branch block the thing is that it's the right bundle branch block it's a functional right bundle branch block because it happened as a function of this premature atrial contraction that occurred right at the moment that this right bundle branch was not yet recovered but the left bundle branch was and so if the AV node passes that signal down just in that moment we get a functional right bundle branch block meaning that the next beat if it comes on time this isn't going to happen again right so this is a very transient finding this is not an abnormal finding and why did I talk about earlier the differences and we said in repolarization with rate well as you can imagine if we have a slow beat to beat if the rate is slower then this curve that we just talked about gets wider right so this curve within in a slower rate depolarization and repolarization curves are going to be longer it's going to take longer for things to repolarize and so the likelihood of us having a premature atrial contraction that occurs in that moment the likelihood is going to increase after a slow beat so after a slow beat we increase the likelihood 
of premature atrial contraction causing dysfunctional right bundle branch block. Okay, so remember it all has to do with the fact that the right bundle branch takes longer to recover compared to the left. And if you have a premature contraction that gets conducted through those fibers right at the right moment, then you get a functional block. So let's take a look at some strips that have this as an example, and this will all make a lot more sense. So here, notice we've got a sinus rhythm. We've got P waves that conduct to QRS complexes, and it's pretty regular, right? It's pretty regular. And then notice we get a premature contraction. This beats premature. It's early, and it's wide. And you're like, huh, that makes me think it's, a premature ventricular traction, contraction because it's wide. But then I look in front of it, and I'm like, well, I wonder if there's any P waves in front of this, right? And so I look for a P wave in front. And if you compare the T wave of the previous beat to the T wave of this beat, look at that sharp deflection. That's a P wave. That's a premature atrial contraction. So we have a PAC, you can see it landing there, right? It looks a lot different than the previous T wave. You can also see it landing right there. And that P wave conducts to this wide complex beat. And look at this. This is V1. This is V1. The beat that is created in V1 has an RS, R prime morphology. Look at that R prime morphology. This is a right bundle branch block morphology that we see in V1 after a PAC. And so that's an exact example, it's a perfect example of we have a premature atrial contraction that occurs when the right bundle branch has not yet repolarized. And because of that, when signal gets conducted down, the right bundle is functionally blocked for a beat. And then you see we recover to the next beat. We have a normal P to a normal QRS. And so that is a functional right bundle branch block. That's an Ashman phenomenon. Let's take a look at the next ECG here. You can see that we've got a lot of premature contractions, right? We have beat, beat, premature, beat, beat, premature, right? Beat, premature. And so look what happens in our premature beats. Here's our normal beats are here, right? This is a normal P wave. That's a normal QRS. And then look what happens. We get a premature contraction. And if you look in V1, you can see here's my normal P wave. Here's my normal QRS. But then you can see I've got this premature atrial contraction right here premature atrial contraction. Notice it's ectopic. It's shaped differently than the normal P wave. So it's a PAC, and it conducts to this wide complex beat. And we're like, well, maybe PACs, why would it be like that? Well, look at the morphology of the QRS. This is, remember, this is V1. It's an RSR prime. That's an R prime. That's a right bundle branch block for that beat, but it's a functional right bundle branch block. And it occurs again. It occurs here. You see the P wave here that conducts to this RSR prime. That's a PAC. It's a PAC. And remember, look at the beat before it. We've got this really slow rhythm. That's a bradycardia. And remember, we said that decrease in the rate equals longer refractory periods, which increases our chances that the gap between that action potential of the right and left bundles exists for us, right? So the longer the longer the R to R interval is, or the slower the rate, the more likely we are to land a premature atrial contraction right there, where the right bundle branch block has not yet recovered, but the left bundle branch has. So we're getting more evidence of functional right bundle branch block. Another way you can call this, if you want to, you can call this long short, meaning that we've got this long interval before, 
and then a short interval. Right, that long short is just meaning that the long one is evidence of the decreased rate for that beat, and the short is evidence of the premature atrial contraction. Let's look at another example. Here we have a different rhythm. We actually have this is a rhythm that is atrial fibrillation. So this phenomenon can also occur in AFib. It's pretty cool. Notice it's an irregular rhythm, right? We have kind of longer and then shorter and then really short and then longer. And look at all of a sudden, there in this AFib, we get this funky beat. Remember that AFib, if I can look at the diagram, remember AFib is characterized by the atrial waves that are just fibrillating. They're happening all over the place, and they bump into the AV node, and the AV node is a bystander, and the AV node sends signal down to the ventricles as a bystander to, you know, when the fibrillatory waves kind of bump into it. That's why it's all over the place. Well, look at what happens here. We get a wide complex beat, right? It's funky. It's wide. And look at the pattern. So look how long it took. The AV node didn't conduct a signal for a long time, and then it conducted this signal. So this is our long, and then it decided to conduct another one really fast, and that is our short. So we see a little bit of a long short pattern, and look at the morphology of this funky beat. We've got a little R, S, R prime, and that R prime is what clues us in to this being a right bundle branch block morphology, right? And this happens in AFib because we had this really long, long beat which increased the duration of the, what, refractory periods of everything. And so it increased the likelihood that if the AV node conducted the next beat really quickly, whenever everything was still refractory, then guess what happened? We had a left bundle branch that had recovered and a right bundle branch that hadn't. And so we get a functional right bundle branch block with a good, long, short phenomenon. So I think that's all we got here um, for all of you guys. I hope this makes sense. Remember, it has to do with refractory periods, right? And it also has to do with the behavior, right? You need to have a premature contraction that occurs early and quicker than the previous beat. So I hope this all makes sense. If you have any questions about this phenomenon, um, feel free to ask. It's really common. People mistake these a lot for premature ventricular contractions. These are not premature ventricular contractions. These are uh, functional rate-related aberrancies. So I hope this makes sense, and um, take care. Have a great rest of your day. See you on the next video.